What is going on guys? Legit here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a pretty interesting match here on steps once again in the M48 pattern. So straight away I like to take my mediums down to the right side of the map or the east side of the map. Uh, I feel that this is most likely where medium tanks will have the greatest impact. Um, especially mediums that have <laughs> sort of sketchy armor. Um, as you know what I mean with the pattern. So, and it's a lot it's a lot more open. It's not so uh, up and in your face kind of combat. So, I usually come on this side and most uh, usually do most of the other mediums in the game. But it also looks like we have a good amount of support over here. So, it looks like this would be a pretty interesting fight. First things to get let up is an E50M on the enemy team and also a bat chat that seems to be repositioning. Put a shot in on E50M and it seems to uh, <laughs> bounce off of the uh, the underplate, so that's cool. So I'm gonna back off. Uh, Tillery's probably looking over here already. Um, I'm just trying to see what's going on. We don't want to be too aggressive here, especially at the beginning of the match and lose health. So I'm playing the safe and seeing how this develops. Shots on the grill that's being a bit too aggressive. Now it does look like that the uh, the two mediums that were over here have backed off, so it looks like we should be pretty safe to move up. You can kind of see they're probably falling back because they don't have a lot of support. As you're looking at the map, there was a lot more tanks that were lit up on the left side of the map. So we should be pretty free to move up here. That was actually pretty risky. <laughs> the grill just happened to miss. That was a rush shot. And we still don't have a, a pretty clear idea of what all is over here. So again, I'm just playing a bit conservative. But the team uh, seems to be pretty much rolling on this side, so we might as well move up and try to try to win the right side quick. We can try to relieve some of the pressure that the rest of the team is facing on the left. The 50M's in trouble. Nowhere for him really to run. And I think his game is about to end pretty quickly here. Alright, and it looks like the other two tanks that were over here uh, fell back, so we've pretty much won the right side of the map now. And we have shots into their base. Artillery gets lit up. You take him out. And that'll relieve a lot of the uh, the pressure we'll face later in the game, not having to worry about getting hit from halfway across the map. Somehow bounce a shot off a of bat chat. Didn't know they actually had armor, so that's cool. But put a nice little return shot in there. So again, doesn't look like they have a lot of support on this right side, so we should be pretty safe to move up here in a little bit and get some more shots on stuff. Now even though we have won the right side of the map, getting into the cap circle is not the greatest uh, idea at the moment. Because on this map the cap circles have basically zero cover in them and all they have to do is just poke out and basically hit what's ever in there, so it's a quick way to get yourself killed, so it's just not a very good idea to begin with. Now at the moment, things seem to be going pretty well for us. It looks like we're surrounding the enemy, and we should be able to mop these guys up pretty quick. Something is on our cap.
not really sure. Let's see if we can get a shot in this T32. Oh, okay. <laughs> there was a lot of you guys looking at me there. Actually glad I didn't didn't poke back there again. Alright, well we gotta go deal with whatever's in our cap circle. It'd be kind of a shame to lose this by by being capped out. And it's an E100. Not actually sure how he managed to get past us. Now, it does kind of seem like a waste of tanks to send three, three tanks after this guy. Um, and realistically, both of those two tanks, the T-49 and the Bat-Chat, may be able to take care of the C-100. The only reason I'm coming over here is because I want to speed this process up. Free up these two tanks so they can come back and start helping the rest of the team. Then I was able to do just that. So the scores at the moment are even. Uh, but not really at the same time because the last remaining six tanks on the enemy team are basically all next to each other and they have cover whereas we were pretty spread out. Now, at the time, I guess flanking them may have seemed like a good option. That is until we lost those those last two tanks. So now we need to start playing a bit more defensively. And there is a good uh, defensive position here on A7, which I just pinged. But it seems the rest of the team wants to try to attack them for whatever reason. It'd be pretty hard to dig them out with what we have left. And it's, it's just really not going to work. So I'm falling back to get to a position where I can try to cover these guys and not get myself killed in the process. So here I can poke out, I can shoot, and I can back up. All they really need to do is keep these enemies lit up. Preferably fall back and make them come to us. But that's not looking how this is going to play out. Panzerfear is the last tank left on my team. And this is really not looking good for us. See if we can save him. Uh, well. Now it's just us against the last remaining four tanks on the enemy team. So again, I'm going to poke out and see if I can get a couple more shots. I'm not going to be able to stay here forever. Ready to fire on target. Zero penetration. Get lit up by the bat shot. I may see if I can sneak in one more shot on this T-57 and we're going to have to move. Oh, nice. Awesome. All right, so wait for myself to get unlit. And then we'll relocate. This is a good spot, but you don't want to stay here because, I mean, you've basically given them the rest of the map to roam and they will they'll eventually come around you and flank you. So really the main thing I have on my side at the moment is the element of surprise. They don't know where I'm coming from. Uh, to them, the last spot I was spotted was up there at A7. So relocating here will give me a better chance of catching some people off guard. That is until we get lit up. And this is what I was saying, the enemy bat chat was flanking around. Staying there would have basically, possibly cost, cost me the game. But we're going to see if we can take this guy out now. Chase him, he doesn't really have anywhere to go. Take him out with the free aim shot. And here is the Panther 2 now. Try to use this hill and use the uh, newly buffed turret of the Patton. And you just quickly realize that probably wasn't the best decision. <laughs> Full health Yag Tiger, okay. Let's see what we can do with this guy. And the last remaining heavy on the team is a T-57. And uh, I really don't know where he is at the moment. And where I am right now is kind of open. So I'm falling back. I'm willing to take a shot here from the Yag Tiger. But he doesn't shoot at me, so that's nice. Try to get into a better spot where I can use my gun depression and my turret armor. But also have some cover from whatever's uh, coming from the north. So again, get unlit. 
relocate to where I originally wanted to get to, which was over here. Looking the completely opposite direction. Not actually sure how I pinned that. <laughs> a mantlet shot on a Yag Tiger, that's interesting. And then there's the T-57, okay. So, he doesn't seem too keen on coming around this corner. I'm trying to decide which one wants to come and get me. Take out the one that has the least amount of health. Take one gun out of the game. And now the T-57 puts his man pants on. And he's coming to get me. But after missing pretty much... His whole clip, we are able to take him out. Last tank for the win. So in that game, we were able to get ourselves 7,500 damage, six kills, and also a Calabanos medal. Now, you may be asking yourselves, how did you get a Calabanos medal? There was only four tanks left. Well, let's back up a little bit and I'll show you. So, as you can see, it has to do with the order in which we took out the grill. See, the grill took out the Panzer IV, and then we took out the grill. So that for that 0 .01 of a second or whatever it was, it was 1 versus 5. But, you know, winning's winning. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. But there was one other thing I wanted to bring out uh, about this match, and it had to do with that T-57 at the end, and why he was so hesitant to attack me. What I didn't realize, believe it or not, when I was playing this match, was that I was still on full health. Probably because I'm not used to being on full health by the end of the match like that, but I was. And the T-57, as you know, has a four round autoloader that does 400 damage per shot. So that's an average of 1600 damage, that he can do per clip. The Patton has 2,000 hit points, so he probably wouldn't be able to clip me, so he would have needed the Yag Tiger to hit me once before he can come out and attack me. And then he'd probably be able to take me out with one clip. But that didn't happen, and he was waiting for that to happen, and that's why it looked like he was scared to come around the corner. But it was a good match nonetheless. So that's gonna wrap this video up, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.